I'm Sarima Goddess, or you can call me Diane. Today, I want to share a little video with you to explain the process of what I do, explain a little bit about how I make my ceramic vessel sinks, and, um, you know, share the process. So, one of the most common questions I'm asked is, how long does it take you to make a sink? And that's just not something I can give a direct answer to. I can't say just, you know, three hours of time or anything like that. It's a, it's a series of, of bits of time that occurs over about a month. So, um, it all starts in my kiln shed. I have my kilns out here and then my clay mixer. And this is where the magic really starts. So what happens here is I measure out amounts of chemicals, mainly clays, and then add them into this vat, empty vat, and add water. Turn it on and it mixes it. And then I turn another switch that de airs it. And then usable clay comes out the end. So, something else that happens here is I mix my glazes. And, you know, clay and glazing and everything, it's a lot of dust and, and different chemicals. So, I'm really fortunate that I have this separate work area outside of my studio, so I'm not breathing this stuff in all the time. So once the sink is thrown and trimmed, then it's ready to add the surface decoration, the sculpture, the border, the design. Um, that's where the really time consuming part happens. And I love making alligator sinks. I've only made a couple of them so far. So I finished him today. So I added his legs and eyes and he is going to sit on a log on this sink. So I'm gonna do a little bit more work and come back in a second. So here's the sink that I was working on. I got the log on and I got the alligator on the log and now I'm adding the finishing details. So there are just so many great texture tools out there for clay artists to create that wood-like texture of the log. I use this texture mat that I rolled the clay on. Um, that's kind of a passion is when I find something really neat. Um, I either purchase it or if I find it outside, I take it back in and use it. I've used rocks to create more of a rock-like edge. Sometimes I even create kind of my own tools. Um, say last night I was working on the alligator and I needed something with more of a diamond or squared off pattern uh, for the scales because they're not round. Alligators don't have round scales. So I uh, took a sharpie and it already has a little divot in the middle and I just sanded it a little bit on the edges, squared it off, and that's what made the texture on the alligator. So details and texture tells a story of sinks. The alligator is not just sitting on a, a glazed bowl. You know, he's in a swamp. So to give it a little bit of extra detail, I add like an algae edge. 
So here's a turtle sink that I showed you earlier, and I have started to glaze it. So first I glaze all the sculptural detail, and I glaze it in a type of glaze that is pretty much what you see is what you get after it's fired. It becomes a little bit darker and more intense, but the colors are really similar, and it kind of has a um, satin matte sheen to it. So I glaze all the sculptural details in that and now I am covering it in a product called Wax Resist. And what that does, it allows me to cover all the sculptural detail and protect the glazing that I did. Um, so when I go ahead and put the crystalline glaze all over the sink, my sculptural detail is protected. Hi, I'm back with this turtle sink and I'm currently glazing it with the crystalline glazes. Here's what it looks like in the bowl. It's a mix from dried chemicals, different powders that I mixed with water. I screened it to make sure there was no clumps in the glaze. And then I just, you know, brush it on. The trick with this glaze is getting enough on. I can't seem to get enough, you know, on it. There, you can definitely get uh, not enough glaze on it. If that happens, you might not even see crystals in the glaze or, you know, the crystals will be very small and run together. So just getting a thick enough coat is my goal. And as you can see, I mentioned the wax resist earlier. And what that does is it burns off in the kiln. So it's, you know, really just wax. But what it does is protect the sculpture so that when I get a little bit of a glaze on it, I can just go back and wipe it off. And then that doesn't cover the detail work on the sculpture. So in a little bit, I will show you how I load these in the kiln. All right, I'm loading the kiln. The turtle sink is in the kiln right now. So basically um, in the kiln, I create a stack with these kiln posts and then put shelves on top of them. And I can stack the sinks one on top of each other. And usually I fit about three per kiln load in. Um, here's one that's about to go in, the last one, and as you can see, it's sitting on a pedestal. And the reason why that is, is because this type of glaze, crystalline glazes, are so fluid that I have to create a catcher. So it has a groove there that catches the glaze, and then there's another one that goes under the drain hole right there, and that catches what comes out to the drain hole. So if I didn't do that, the sink would you know the glaze would run all over the kiln shelf and the, it would just be a mess it would probably destroy the sink so that's one extra step that goes into working with these glazes that they is they have to be fired on pedestals so it's monday morning i loaded this kiln saturday afternoon and it is finally cool enough to unload this is the exciting part for a ceramic artist it's like christmas morning we all say Let's see what's inside. All right. the sink back into the studio I sanded the bottom on a diamond grinding wheel and now I get to photograph it and I am ceramic goddess and I just want to say thank you so much for letting me share the process of what I do with you and I hope you enjoyed it thank you so much